This is the first section on chapter two, which is entitled Conic Sections One. And the first section we're going to be looking at parametric equations. Um, now I'll put a link in the description to um, a fuller description on parametric equations, uh, which you'll learn about uh, when you do pure year two, the pure year two book. Um, but for now, uh, a parametric equation uh, is one where the X and Y coordinates are defined by different functions of T. Okay, so I'll write some examples down so you can see what's going on. So X, the way that we get the X coordinate is by working out some function of T. The way that we get the Y coordinate is by some other function of t. This is what parametric equations look like. As to oppose something called a Cartesian equation, and with Cartesian equations, these are what we've been used to seeing so far, where you get uh, y is some sort of function of x. So Cartesian equations might be y equals 4x minus 2, uh, y equals uh, 7x squared plus uh, 3x, or even um, x um, squared equals y, or it could be y squared equals something, y squared equals 7 over x, for example, these are all um, examples of Cartesian equations. So the only variables in there are x and y. But with a parametric equation, we introduce a third variable, t. Now, t actually does not get plotted on the axis. We still plot x and y, but we use different values of t to get x and y coordinates. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say, for example, um, that the way that we get our x coordinate is by doing 3t and the way that we get our y coordinate is by doing t squared. So for example, when t is uh, 0, we will get the coordinate at x equals 0, y equals 0, because you just do 3 times um, 0, 0 squared. So you'll get the coordinate zero, zero, which you can plot. Okay, let's choose another value for t. Let's say t is one. So if t was one, for our x coordinate, we'd get three times one, so x would be three. The way we get our y coordinate would be one squared, so y would equal one. So then we would plot that coordinate. Okay, let's try another one. t can be positive, it can be negative. Doesn't have to be whole numbers. So for example, I might decide that t is minus 2.5. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So the x coordinate, when t is minus 2.4, if I do 3 times negative uh, 2.5, so I'd get negative 7.5 for the x coordinate. And for the y coordinate, I would do negative 2.5 squared. So I'm going to need a calculator for this. Um, and that would give me 6.25, because if you square a negative, it comes positive. So you get 6.25. So this would be the coordinate minus 7.5, 6.25. Okay, now because t can be any value, t can take any value, we write it like this. We say that t, and I'll round it e like this, and r. This means that t can take any real number t can be any real number. So if you know about complex numbers, it can't be complex numbers. That means t can be positive, negative, it can be zero, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, it can be a third, any of those numbers um, that it can be. Okay, so t can be any real number, so we'll just add that to here. T basically means in, in a group of any real number. 
And what we need to be able to do is to convert uh, parametric equations to Cartesian equations. So if we want to go from parametric, a parametric equation to a Cartesian equation, we put our two equations together, the one for x, the one for y, and we need to eliminate t algebraically. So when we eliminate t, we turn a parametric equation into a Cartesian equation. And if we recognize the Cartesian equation, we can sketch it because we know what uh, y equals x squared or squared graphs looks like. We know what reciprocals look like. We know what cubic graphs looks like. Um, it's very tricky uh, with parametric equations. There are a few that, that we will recognize later on. But on the whole, looking at a parametric equation, you wouldn't necessarily know what that graph would look like. But when it's Cartesian, we would recognize it. So that's one of the reasons we would convert a parametric equation to a Cartesian. OK, a parametric or a curve has parametric equations x equals a t, y equals 2 a t. And this bit here where t can be any real number. a is a positive const uh, constant. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve. OK, so the way we're going to do that is by eliminating t. So we've got a, uh, a e x equals a t squared. And we have y equals 2 a t. So what we want to do is to make t the subject of one and substitute it in the other. Now, my suggestion would be that we make t the subject of this one. Because if we try and make t the subject of this, we're going to end up with a square root. So we really want to avoid making t the subject of this because of the square root or because of the t squared. Because we'd end up having to square root and you'd have to put plus square root minus square root. It, it just gets a bit messy. So we'll take uh, this and we'll make t the subject. So t will equal uh, y over 2a. We will then substitute that into here. And when we do that, what we'll get is x equals a. And now t is y over 2a, all squared. So now it's just sort of uh, rearranging it now. We're not rearranging it. Um, squaring out the bracket. So we'll have a times by y squared over 2a squared, which is 4a squared. Then what will happen is the a and that squared will cancel out, giving us x equals y squared over 4a. Now we could leave it like that, but generally when we write um, an equation in Cartesian form, we either want to make it y equals the subject or y squared equals the subject. So here we can make y squared the subject, so we won't square root it. So y squared equals 4ax. So that would be our final answer here. So I'll just make a note here that uh, we would uh, leave it as y or y squared as the subject rather than x. Okay, a curve has parametric equations x equals c t, y equals c over t. t can be any real number. t cannot be equal to zero. Otherwise, we would end up dividing by zero in here, which we don't want to do, where c is a positive constant. constant. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve. OK, so it's the same method as before. Make t the subject of one, substitute it into the other. So we've got x equals ct, y equals c over t. Now, it would make sense to make t the subject of the y part um, so that we're not having to put substitute something in the bottom of that fraction. 
So rather than make the um, take the x part of the parametric equation and make t the subject, we take the y part. Uh, and if we do that and make t the subject, actually get t equals c over y. Here's a little tip here. Uh, whenever you have uh, equations like this, um, if you just swap these two over, okay, you're allowed to do that. That's just two steps in one. So if we swap over the t and the y, we get t equals c over y, and that just saves a step of multiplying by t and then dividing by y. You can go straight to that. So now this is going to get substituted into here. Went a bit too far on my arrow. So if I do that, that will be x equals c, and then t is going to be c over y. Okay, so that is x equals c squared over y. And using that little tip again, I can swap these two over. Of course, if we want to leave it as uh, y as the subject. So um, y equals c squared over x. Okay, you may recognize that as... If, it's up, if that was like 1 over x, 2 over x, it's the reciprocal graph. So that thing about changing it to a Cartesian uh, means that we can get it into that form that we can we can recognise, and I recognise that. So that means part B is much easier. So part B, a sketch of it, it's going to be a, a reciprocal graph. So remember, this is just a sketch. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to get the parts of that right and then we'll label it y equals c squared over x. Uh, you may also recognize um, this as the reciprocal x, y equals c squared. Yeah, so that's an alternative way of writing it. So you may recognize those graphs x times y, the product of x and y equals a constant. Uh, gives you um, also the reciprocal graph. So changing it to a Cartesian made it much easier to recognize. We should now be able to do exercise 2a on pages 34 to 35 of the textbook. Very quick recap, won't take long. So um, we have these parametric equations. And with our parametric equations, x is a function of t uh, and y is a different function of t. Now, those could be any letters, but uh, we tend to use like p and q when we're talking about these uh, conic section type graphs. Uh, a Cartesian equation. These are where you have y is some sort of function of t, and we just need to be able to convert between parametric and Cartesian. So we want to be able to change from a parametric to a Cartesian, and we can do that by eliminating t. Okay, and we do that by making t the subject of one of the equations.